stand for a long time. Matthew chapter 27, all those things, I was really blessed by that. Amen. And uh, we go, if we may, starting verse 37. Matthew 27, 37, Christ on the cross. And set up over his head the night this is accusation, say written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left, and they that passed by reviled him, that was despised him, flashed their heads, making fun of him, and said, Thou that destroys the temple and builds in three days, save thyself, thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. <clears throat> Likewise also the chief priests mocking him. But the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. If he trusted in God, he let him deliver him now. If he had, we will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. These also which were crucified with him, cast the saints in his teeth. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the service for the saint, just your blessing to be here. But thank God, Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ that never came down. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach tonight for the help of God on this song right here. Whether you're saved or whether you're not tonight, we make some principles of life. But my thought this night is this right here: Jesus, come down. Satan said to Jesus, "Jesus, come down." I'm going to say something about when you're saved by the grace of God. You put your name to that. But not when you out your lifetime. The time you got saved, the time you get holy. My friend Satan will say, "Not David, whoever your name is." Come down from your cross. Let me tell you something right now. The Bible says, Son of man, deny himself. And pick up his cross and die, my friend. That he cannot be my disciple. Amen. What's that cross for me, my friend? It's God's purpose, my friend. And my friend, he's will and mind your life right here. Amen. And you notice something right here in the particular scripture right here. Satan, my friend, trying to destroy the cross. Remember back from King Herod? My friend was just a young fellow, all the different things. He did work tonight. I'll be being a king. Amen. Okay, that's good because this is an important sermon, especially someone that's not here. Are we good now on that? Sorry for interruption. That with this, a lot of time you have a sermon really important, and, I, and I'm, he's talking about a situation for church. And I thought, whatever you do, get this to that individual. Amen. Because you know what? And even before he, uh, you know, Satan would rather saw you destroyed, my friend, before you become a Christian. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. And ever since that time, he's been trying to get you not to bear your cross and follow Jesus. Not to fulfill that purpose in your life. You'll find that wherever Jesus went, my friend Satan fall behind him. Let me say something to you, friend. Right? If you're a child of God, you are doing the will of God. My friend Satan's going to follow you wherever you go, trying to tear down the work of God. But my friend, you know what he's going to do, my friend? There'll be times in your life that you'll set back. There'll be trying times. My friend, there's trying times in Christ's life. But my friend, on the cross right now was the pinnacle of this, my friend. He came, fulfilled the scripture and all these things. Things. But you know what? When he's up on the cross, remember this, friend, in pain and agony, my friend, his natural body, my friend, is going to shock. My friend lost the blood, been beaten unmercifully. My friend, before that, all these things, you know what they're saying now? Now they're using scripture on him. They're using the things he says, just like you. Hey, Amen. Patricia McCulley, I want you, are you listening, Patricia? I want you to listen to this here tonight. You know what, Patricia, I know that come had moved your life toward God, begin to read your Bible faithfully, and all those things, you know what? And she'd say, happy. And, happy, and Patricia was just so happy. You know, and people take and know that, you know, the Lord was blessing Patricia most. But you know what? Then something come along, wasn't it? Something come along called Satan and said, Patricia, this night, now where is your joy? Now where is this God at? You know what it's like, friend? And don't you be fooled this night, these young people. No matter who you are in this church, friend, young or old, my friend, the older people, my friend, listen, or maybe not as susceptible to it. You think all these young Christians come to this church recently, my friend, is not being attacked? You think they my friend, many attack, my friend, from people, uh, my friend, religious people, that's where it comes in at. How many times you come home this night and there have been people serving God out nowhere this night, their husband comes up and says, I want a divorce. Satan says this night, well, where's your God at now? Hey, Amen, all this and that. Sure pays you serve God. You're serving God, paying your time. You get laid off. You know what Satan says? He says, this night, where's your God at now? You're sitting there trying to serve God faithfully that. All of a sudden, my friend, you go, my friend, you've got a, a lump, my friend, and parts of your body. 
body, you go check it out, my friends, four stage lung cancer. Where Satan says, Hallelujah, God, come down off the cross tonight. Where's your God at right now? Let me tell you something, friend. God never promised me and you, my friend, this not a rose garden. God never promised you, my friend, it wouldn't rain unjust and unjust. But I'm going to just have to mix this up a little bit. I'm going to flip in chapter 4. But my friend, people are watching you right now. They're watching when you're on a mountaintop. They're watching the valley. Can I tell you something, friend? God's still God. Hallelujah. Woo! Of the mountaintop, the same way as the valley. But what, my friend, Philippians, you know, we might understand, friend, what we're going through. But, friend, people are watching us right now. But listen, I'm going to go, if I may, of Philippians, not chapter 1 in God's Word. I can quote that to you, but I want you to read it with, you, with me if you would. I'll get to it. I got a lot of mark, but in Philippians chapter 1, he's in a, a church, at, he's in a jail there at Philippi. You will find this not in verse 12 of 1. But he said, I would you should understand, brethren. Hey, I mean, listen, what, this is an aged apostle. This is a mature Christian. Let me say something to you right now in Hilltop Baptist Church. A lot of you have been in this church, my friend, me, my friend, uh, 30-something years. A lot of you, my friend, been here, my friend, 20-something. Others, 30-something. This is, my friend, an older, mature church. I told Pete today, I said, Pete, this night, I said, listen. I said, this church knows. They don't nurture you alone, won't you, church? You understand, Pete, you're encouraged when he announced his calling to preach this morning, won't you? You'll bring him along, won't you? But you want my friend this night, the night but you want not because listen, but I ask you, my friend, this not the hill top bad this church. Are we gonna come down off the cross, church? Are we gonna come down off the cross? Are we gonna come down? My friend and what that's a little more later on. Are we going to church? I don't think so, friend. I don't think so. I think there are too many people, my friend. Hey man, you've got too you've been in too many battles. Amen. Amen. But I would help you understand, brother, the, the things which happened to me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. What you think, my friend's hardship for you. Amen. You know, not your own, but you went through a divorce. You went through cancer. You went through different sicknesses. All the different things that come upon you. My friend, you know what, my friend, not, not because of your choosing or what you did, but for the glory of God. Amen. You know what, my friend, boy, I've just got a, I've got a lot of scripture right here, but I think First Peter chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 this night. He said, listen, now he said, if any man and suffer as a Christian. <coughs> let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf right here. Amen. The night, you know what the night said, but let no man suffer as an evildoer, my friend, as a murderer, or a busy by another man's matters. You know when I wrote down this night, friend, bless God. Amen. I'm gonna, I wrote these down the night. Amen. Let me tell you something this night. And I thought, Lord, I'd rather suffer this night for the glory of God, my friend, than for Satan. I remember a time, I'll tell you one thing, I brought Satan a whole bunch of goods. <coughs> I said a bad example, friend. I tell you, my friend, when I was there before I got saved by the grace of God, I'd hitch my little nephews up, my friend, fight like little banging roosters, get them drunk, my friend, five and six year old laugh. I had a blinded soul going to hell, friend. And I'll tell you something right now, that's who I was. I was blinded, but thank God, hey, amen, there's not another suffering Christian. I'll say this, hey, amen, you ever heard them old preachers say, I, I hope the night when I'm uh, called out right here, I die in the pulpit. Charlie Duncan's one of them, wasn't it? Die in the pulpit preaching, bless God. I'm going to tell you one thing this night. I don't care what I'm doing. As long as I'm in the spirit of God, it'll be fine. But you know what I wrote down, bless God, we're going to die somewhere, ain't we? We're going to die somewhere, ain't we? I'd rather die, bless God, for the glory of God. I wrote this down. I'd rather die in the church house, my friend, the jail house. I'd rather die, my friend, in the church house, my friend, that's not, my friend, that's not, my friend, the crack house. I'd rather, my friend, die, my friend, the church is the whorehouse. I'd rather die, my friend, that's not, listen, for the glory of God, that's not in the greedy house. I'd rather die, my friend, in the church house, bless God, that's my house. Amen. Amen. Say amen. Glory to God. Amen. I don't plan to die at my house. Got no intentions of it right now. Amen. Too much, too many miles behind me. But let me tell you something right now, friend. But you know what he said? Listen to this. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and all other places. You know what my friend, he knew my friend, listen. And what Paul will say this now, I think in the, uh, I think the 27th chapter of this now, my friend, of the book of uh, Acts right here. But you know what he said this night when he's cast upon the island. You know what he said? An angel Lord appeared to me and he spoke to me. And he said, Paul, he said, thou must this night go before Caesar. Can I tell you, before Rome, you've got 
got to go before Caesar. He said, you know what, Mr. This not listen. I'm going to cross the carry. And the Lord spoke to him. He said, let me tell you something now. You might be in this shipwreck down here because they wouldn't listen. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I'm getting you to Rome. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Remember the sermon when I found witness my transplant doctor up there? I left there shouting, bless God. I thought, dear God, I went before Caesar. Hey, man, I know that's my purpose. I'll say this. I may be wrong about this. I don't believe. I'll go back because I'm not going up there. There won't be no more transplants. I don't believe I have to go back through what I did in the hospital. Hey, man, I'm telling you something right now. I don't believe my family be infected any more than what they have already, all that stuff I've been through. I don't know what lies before me, but I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I know out there somewhere, bless God, I'll preach my last sermon. I'll make my last visit. I'll be my last church service. But I'm telling you one thing right now. I'm not coming down off the cross. Hear me, friend, tonight. He said, David, oh, God, does he try it every day, every day. David, come down off the cross. Well, I've got a lot to preach. I, I'm just telling you now, amen. But I'll get done. But so, but my bond in Christ are manifesting all the palace and still other places tonight. And me and the brethren of the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Amen. Can I tell you something right now? How many times have you looked about what a brother or sister's went through? It's encouraged you, my friend, to do better. Yeah. And you know what they thought? They can do it. I can do it. Amen. Look around you, friend. And dear God, you've got examples in this room. You've got people, my friend, to look around at. And you know, so let's not find this or find that. And, but I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. Paul said it's for the furtherance of the gospel. And what you're going through, these trials in your life, you're trying to serve God. People are watching you. you what they're going to see this night is God still good are you still happy 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 or my friend it's not you want they're going to sit back and say they won't say it's your face maybe some will they say this night well tell me about you God now tell me about you God. I don't know what's going on in your life what's a sickness what's problems whatever it may be but you know what my friend they'll say they'll look well we'll see if they're still happy 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 we'll see if God's still good I'm going to tell you one thing this night I can't say to you but I'm going to say something and maybe some people prove him wrong but I can tell you something right now I I thought back in my mind, and I've seen several preachers come out of this church, but you want know my friend, I've also seen some. My friend anointed, I think of three in particular, that was anointed, my friend of God, my friend and far for God. But you know what, my friend and I, they came down off the cross. They came down, they dropped the cross, they come down tonight. And my friend, it's not, you know, it's not good. It's not good, and I think maybe, maybe, maybe uh, uh, two of them I don't think can ever come back, maybe one. But, but I'm telling you right now, and I think how many men I've seen down through the years, my friend had power with God, my friend had favor with God, and my friend, that's not you what they did. They said, come down off the cross. Just come down. That's not different reasons. But you want know my friend, that's not Jesus didn't come down. You know why? And this is what I'm going to say this to you, friend. Don't come down. They're watching you. Yeah, you're going to have your valleys. Yeah, you may not handle everything right. But you know what you do, my friend? You show them that, my friend, you're getting up. Remember this, friend. Jesus through his humanity. On the way to cross, my friend, stumbled on the way of the cross. My friend, physically. But I'm going to tell you, woman, his heart was to go on. Let me tell you something, friend, right now. You may have a body that's a failing you, but if you've got that heart and that spirit inside of you right here, hey, men and not, you can go on. And let me tell you something, friend, I've been blessed in this church, my friend, to see so many, so many, some of you right now, my friend, that come on sick. I've seen people come here so sick, and yet come on. I've seen those examples, friend. That's the ones that I look to. But let me say something also tonight. I'm going to follow the Spirit of God. But my friend, you know what? You've got a cross to carry. Everybody in this room has got a cross to carry. And my friend is not now thought about, you know, where people sit back and think, listen, I never want nobody to Christ, neither have I. I'm going to say one thing this night. I've not done much this night. You've done as much as I have, friend, if you've worked in the Spirit of God. This is what I'm trying to say right here. I know we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. Let me say this though, friend, it comes to conversion of the soul. I thought about this right here. My friend, you may say, well, I lied did this not this them. Kathy over here had a big, uh, the greatest impact on Carol's uh, Creekmore and, and, and Gary. That was her work tonight. And I felt like this at times, maybe it, Kathy, I should went by sooner, but God knew Gary's heart when they sent me by. You said, well, there's not, we just one to uh, let him to Christ tonight. 
I was the one that God used, my friend, to tell him a few things. I had no more to do than Kathy did. It's all through Jesus. Hallelujah. God, do you hear me right, friend? No matter who may plant, who may water, it's only God gives the increase. Say amen, brother. That's what we need to know, friend. You say, well, I'm not important. Yes, you are. That's why I'm going to bring out this. Not listen. God, oh, I feel the preacher tonight. Listen to what Jesus said this night. Turn back this night if I may a page. My friend, this night, Matthew chapter 26 tonight. Amen tonight. If I can find that, if I may. Matthew chapter uh, 26 tonight. Amen tonight. And 50, 50, uh, 53 and 4, I think it is. Amen this night. But in verse 52, he then said, Jesus, they were in the garden of Gethsemane. Put up again thy sword in this place. For all that night that, the night that take the sword... <coughs> Share perish with a sword. And he said this night, and he told the disciples, Thinkest thou not that I can now pray to my Father, and he shall present give me this night more than twelve legions of angels? That's a new range of angels, friend. God's looking over you, friend. And you know what, my friend, tonight? But how then shall the scripture be fulfilled, and thus it must be tonight? You know what? Isaiah said, what did he, he talked about a lion out of the tribe of Judah of the root of David. Hey, Amen. Let's not think about that. My friend, Isaiah spoke of it. Hey, Amen. There's not going to be born of a virgin. My friend, listen. Many, many years before Christ was born, the scripture had to be fulfilled. And you know what Jesus said? Let me say something to you, friend. You've come to a kingdom right now, no matter who you may be in this room, my friend, for a purpose. But you know what, friend, Satan said to you this night? Well, listen, since you got saved tonight, you know what? All hell is broke loose. You know why? That's exactly right, friend. Amen. I hope to God, I hold a preacher, my friend, not years ago, preached many years ago on a cassette. And he said this night, you know what? <clears throat> he said, every time, he said, I take the pulpit. He said, I hope Satan squirms. Every time I throw, hit the pulpit, hope Satan wiggles around. I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. Every time you open your mouth, your hope, my friend, Satan gets tore all to pieces. Amen. That's not dear God. Amen. You know why? Because he can't stand, my friend, preaching about Jesus. He can't stand you living and showing people the goodness of God, friend. <clears throat> Amen. The night. But I'm going this night, if I can, to St. John chapter 19, or 18, not verse 37. Amen. Pilate was before him. Listen, friend, everybody in this room right now, you know why? Because Satan's mad. He's upset. You know why? They're attacking you at work. They're attacking you in your home. <coughs> because, my friend, you shine, my friend, darkness. My, you shine light in that darkness. And those blinded souls, you're showing them something different. And, my friend, Satan don't want that, friend. He hates the light. It ain't you, my friend. He hates it. It's the light in you, friend. You're showing them something different. Keep on shining, baby. Keep on shining. Keep on shining. Amen. Keep on shining. But let me tell you something, friend. Satan going to fight you. But you know the problem is? How many times you think Jesus looked down that crowd was on the cross and saw people he healed? How many times you think, my friend, that, let me tell you something. God heals a lot of lost people, friend. Right. You know what, my friend, because of his mercy, trying to show them something. But they don't all get saved, friend. God feeds a whole lot of people out here miraculously. They don't always get saved. Right. Amen. That's not, God does a lot of things for a lot of people. My friend may come to their church for a while. It don't mean they get saved, does it? Amen. That's not, you know, I thought how many times he looked down and saw in the crowd. My friend, those, my friend, being agitated on by those religious hypocrites and all those things. But listen what Pilate therefore said to him. Art thou then... Are thou then king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. Thou should bear witness in the truth. Everyone is of truth. Hear my voice. He said, You know what? You say I'm a king, and for this cause I was born tonight. Amen. Not my friend, an earthly king, but the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Every knee shall bow to him. Hallelujah. God and every tongue shall confess. Amen. It's not my friend, the glory of God. Amen. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. It's not my friend, the glory of God the Father. But you know what he said this night? And for this call that came in the world right here. I'm going back to a very familiar one right here. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible said this right here. He said this night. He told when he called Jeremiah. Remember something now. Jeremiah never was in a time he preached my friend feel good message. Jeremiah wasn't in a time right now where everybody shouted. It's the opposite of that. Jeremiah preached in a time when Israel was backslidden, going away from God. <coughs> but go me if I can right now. Jeremiah 1 5. He said, Before I formed thee in the belly, for I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. For you come out of the womb, I sanctified you, I set you aside for this work of God. And I ordained you, I gave you that authority this night, that you'll be a prophet to the nations. 
I'm going to say something, friend. You said you believe that applies to the preachers? I believe that applies to everybody. Amen. My friend, God, my friend, listen, I'm not a Calvinist, my friend. I don't believe just a few, God selects a few to be saved. I believe what the Bible said tonight. It's not God's will, any should perish. All come to repentance. Whosoever, my friend, shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you believe that, friend, right now is this? Jesus said if and they said, well, they're not, he said, you know what? In John 15, 22, he said this, now if I had not come and spoke, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin right here. But hear what he's saying, my friend, it's not the Bible said, and my friend, the book of Philippians tonight, he said, the grace of God which brings the salvation hath appeared unto all men. Amen. Did you hear that, my friend? And God's grace of salvation for all the acts of the apostles hath appeared, my friend, to everybody. You hear me? I don't know how he does that, but that's what the scripture says. Amen. We'll go right now if I can. Amen. This night in the word, but we've got a purpose down here in life. Remember the great apostle Paul, no one would have thought this, would they? Acts, my friend, they're not chapter 9. I believe around verse 10, somewhere in that area, if I'm not mistaken, you'll find that, my friend. Uh, I think it is. No, verse 15. Amen. The Bible said this. He said, go thy way. Talking about Ananias, go lay hands on him not because he's praying. God had brought him down. Go thy way. That it's not for he's a chosen vessel unto me. For I'm not, and listen what he said, to bear my name. He said, this not before the Gentiles, before the kings, and before the, my friend, Israel. And you know what else he said this not, my friend? And I must shew him my great things. He must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. But you know what? Paul had a purpose in his calling right here. Let me go on now, my friend, if I can. But you know what? Listen what they, he said in the Word of God. The Bible said this not, I think, in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 3 in the Word of God. And you think about this, friend, right here. And he said this, why? Why why should Christ come down? He done been through the he went to the garden agonizing pain. He got that under the blood. But let me tell you what else he did. He done been to Pilate's, my friend, judgment hall. He done been beaten and scourged and everything else in the world. My friend, he done a bloody pulp. My friend is not should not even my friend have lived. And my friend, you know what he's saying now? He said, Why should I come down now? Bless God. I'm almost top the hill. Hey man, I'm almost top the hill. Can I say something to your church this night? I'm almost top the hill. Well, you're a lot younger than me. I'm gonna say one thing. I don't know how long God's got me. I'm yours for his mercy. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now, friend. I'm a whole lot closer. I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm not 25 years old. My friend, full of zeal, and don't know a whole lot of nothing when I started preaching right here tonight. Let me tell you something, friend. That's almost 40 years ago. But can I tell you something right now? I'm closer home. I'm closer home. And I'm going to tell you one thing, friend, tonight. I'm a whole lot closer home tonight. Amen. Not by the glory of God. I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go with it. Amen. Go with me right now if I can. But you know what he said? There's not in Galatians my friend chapter I think chapter uh, uh, 4 I believe it is around verse 3 or no chapter 3 I think 2 and 3 right there he said, if after you've known, no, that's uh, Galatians 4, 9, I'll quote you that one. He said, after you've known God or known of God, how turn you again to the weak and barely image of the world? Now listen to me, where you desire again to be in bondage. Can I almost say one thing right now this night? Christ was a holy God, and why would he want to come down that bunch of outlaws on the bond down, a bunch of self-righteous hypocrites, everything else in the world, my friend, a bunch of my friend, a do, do, uh, talkers doing nothing, my friend, uh, hard-hearted people, why in the world want to come back down to where they is that come off his cross and I'm tell you one thing that's not he knew my friend that's not what the cross meant he knew his purpose he knew my friend one day that he had to be crucified and died for the sins he laid it down freely but can I tell you something I also he knew and you know my friend the night he knew one day this not my friend he meant, but notice something now between the sixth and the ninth hour they were said there's darkness all the land he mean can I say something to you not from the time that you prayed you endured you didn't you didn't endure it you didn't call and ask God for deliverance. You know I'm going to see it through. God, I know it's your will. But you want know what? They're about, they're, it could be three hours. It could be three years. It could be 30 years. But you know what, my friend? Well, you don't, my friend, see God move on that particular situation. But can I almost say one thing? You know, bless God, if you're in the will of God. And my friend, God's got you in this battle. You know, one day this night, my friend, I'm going to tell you one thing. Amen. Dust is going to sing. One day, joy is coming in the morning. You may endure it for a night. But you know what Jesus knew? He knew he had to be crucified. He knew that. And there's three agonizing more hours. Three hour more hours, friend. I'm going to tell you, probably thought, felt like 30 
the years. Can I tell you what else he knew? He was going to go, my friend, to the tomb. My friend, it's not listen. He's going to the heart of the earth, my friend. And you find Peter. He's going to preach to the spirits in prison. Don't ask me to explain all that. Don't nobody else can either. I'm just telling you what he said. Hey, Amen. I'll leave that to his business. But let me tell you something right now. But you know what he knew? Hallelujah. God, what did he know? He told them. He said, you're going to sit here and destroy this temple in three days. But he said, I'm telling you something. I'm building it back again. You know what that meant, friend, to all of us? Amen. The night. Listen. He said, listen, I know. I've got three days now to show them the, that they know this. Now, I was dead. I'm going to make full many and found them. They know I was dead. Amen. It's not on the third day. I'm coming out of there. Amen. The night. Can I tell you something? Bless God. Do you believe it, my friend? But Jesus knew. He said he endured the cross, despite the shame, and sat around the Father, around the hand of the Father, and for the joy set before him. I'm going to go right now this if I can. The night in the, I'm going to go over the sixth chapter of Nehemiah. Boy, this has been an anchor of scripture for me. This has been an anchor for me. Nehemiah chapter six, down through the years, and I thought, this is me. You're going to find out this night, and notice what Satan wants to do. Hey, man, how many of you are like me, man? Your life was a mess. I mean, you didn't know where you was coming or going. Satan coming out, tearing your life up, tearing your home up, tearing everybody up. Anybody in your life that other than me, my friend? Satan had just made a, a, a mess of your blinded life. Hey, Amen. And all of a sudden, this night, you know what? You got a hold of God, my friend, tonight, night, and you got saved. And what did you do? You started building your wall. You started, my friend, building this relationship with God. Begin to build your faith. Devil sat back and laughed this night. You mean this night? Boy, I've heard this. You mean this night? God help us. They'll sit back this night. You mean what? You mean you got a preacher out there preaching? Ain't even been to seminary. Everything else in the world. <laughs> I thought, yeah, you not one ain't ever been to Calvary. Hallelujah, God. Amen. This night, I thought I might not be in the seminary. And I'm not the smartest duck, but I'm gonna tell you one thing that's not friend we all got to grow but i'm going to tell you one thing right now majority my friend these religious institutions my friend uh, have got a bunch of lying lying binding people my friend my friend suiting up a carnal mind and, and confusing a bunch of people my friend and they got a carnal mind my friend not saved and trying to minister the gospel that's why we got all these crazy ideals right now hey, amen it's far-fetched but listen you know what my friend here you are you built through the rubble this night they said you'll never be nothing put your name to that you know, you can't sing, right? Janice, you can't play the piano this night. You know what? This night, like everybody else. And me think Janice is doing a pretty good job now. Amen. 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 And me think she is, right? Amen. Okay. Amen. How about Nisa back here? Had to sit here and spend time and time and time. Yeah, you can't do it, Nisa. You can't. You, you can't play by year. You don't know this and that. Bless God, you found a way, didn't you? You found a way, didn't you? Smile, right? Said you couldn't do it, right? Let me tell you something, friend. Whatever God, if it come easy, we wouldn't give God no glory, wouldn't it? That's why he don't call a bunch of know-it-alls to preach, friend. Hey, man, that's why he don't call supermen to preach. That's why he calls people, my friend, like me and you. My friend, you know what? Let's not realize, Jesus, I can't do without you. Hey, man, they're not. You know what? Don't let the devil tell you a nobody. Hey, man, there's not. Let me tell you something. Your faithfulness in the house of God, they see you coming on. Oh, I don't do nothing but come to church. Thank God, friend. You know how much that encourages the preacher, my friend? My friend, to not have people call their people, my friend, you know what? Whatever reason, there's not, you aren't faithful. But my friend, you know what? Think about this. Those that do come, and I'm going to tell you something, Satan don't want you to come. Amen. But you have an important part. You've got a purpose. Now, I might have done this. So it's certain laughed and the scorn. He just kept praying. He told him this night, said, you ain't got part or lot in this. Let me tell you something. Something you better realize one thing. You're not, God's not going to use the world and sinful people, bless God, to build his church and ain't saved. Amen. God don't have to have the world's money to build his church. Amen. I'm telling you right now, God will supply the need. We've seen that. Amen. God will supply the need in your life. Be anyway, in chapter 6 right here, amen, they were getting mad, mad, mad. And God would always spoil and he'd always pray. Tonight, and you know what? He had a mind to work, the people did. But Nehemiah chapter 6 this night, boy, I remember preaching this years ago. One the sermons I'll never forget. But the night uh, six two, then Sambalat and Jesus, the night sent to me, saying, Come, let us now meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. I'm going to stop right there this night. Notice something tonight. These are people, my friend, the night you know what it is tonight? That's give you all kind of rough time. They're trying to hinder your faith. They're trying to keep you from serving God. Sure. Moving up this night. Well, I don't see no problem with that. Everything else in the world. That's going to run you crazy going to church twice on Sunday. Yes, sir, buddy. I ain't getting to that either. 
I'm going to tell you one thing, friend. Watch people running people crazy. They got my friend that's not my, trying to find everything out in the world. My friend running here, running there, working five and six days a week, running this place, running that place, getting down here while I'm going to find else not. The business is closed and they got there. Amen. Amen. But this one said this night, come, let's meet in the plain of Ono. Notice something, friend. He didn't come to Jerusalem and talk, did he? No. He said, come down here where we're at in one of the, one of the villages in the plain of Ono. Come on, remember something now. You've got to come on down where he's at. You've got to come down where these people and compromise them trying to, my friend, give you a rough time. It's nobody but Satan, friend. Can I say one thing that's not? What business you got, my friend, going and meeting and compromising with the devil when people are sitting back tonight? Oh, I'll tell you what now, honey. If you'll just miss a few services tonight, mine, your problem, my friend, will stop. i got news you don't you do it man don't you do it woman you do that my friend i'll tell you what your trouble's just begun and that's the way the devil works this night hey man they're not well i'm getting tired of watching the kids that's not why you're going to i want a little time too i'm going to say one thing friend you stay with god god will take care of him and her amen. amen you want to say come on down now amen come on down no don't you shine no more light you don't realize that reading the devil that you know why you're doing you have an impact in him and her amen. you're making a difference I want to know something. And he sent mission to them that saying, I'm doing a great work. I'm doing a great work, so I can't come down. He said, man, I'm telling you right now. I, and I sat there the night and cried, and I thought, God, what it is to make a difference in another human being's life. What it is, God, this night to put a pair of shoes on some little kid? I ain't got one. What it is, my friend, to go somebody in the hospital, my friend, sick, and just say you care? What it is to be a part of it, my friend, to cook a pot of beans to somebody? Come over this night and say, hey, you've been a blessing to me. All those things, friend. You know why I prayed this night? I thought, God, I th now listen to me right here. How many of you want to see your church grow? How many of you want to see your church grow? Okay, this is the deal. This is what God said. He went out, my friend, tonight. And to the, you remember he told me he went out. They've got too many things. They made a lot of this night going to the farm, merchandise. No big deal. I'm telling you something right now. Very few people that's got everything they want in life, you're about wasting your time talking to them. Did you hear what I said? Unless they break down somewhere with something bad. Ain't that right? Got too many things going their way, buddy. Oh, I got a new car. Got this, 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 this. Home, everything. I'm telling you, I might go sometime. I might come out this night. Okay. He said, tell you what you do. You go out here to the, the lanes of the city. Go to the poor, the halt, the blind, and the maim. You know what? Tonight I prayed. About a year or so ago, I said, God, <coughs> send us people. That want to hear the truth. Okay, let me let me expound that for just a moment here. You know what we're asking? How many want to see your church to grow? Amen. This is what you're asking for. God sent us some people that we can love. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> God sent us some people that we can love. <laughs> that means you're going to have to have some patience. Amen. They're going to have some wounded one with you. They're going to have some sick. They're some people that ain't got no self-esteem. Amen. If they're willing. You know who my friends, my friend are not? They're people out my friend. You know what they need? A church grows when church shows love, brother. A church will grow when they take time to go out and show people they care about them. You hear me, right, friend? People Amen. sit back and wonder. And they say, well, you can't do the things you're doing out here. That's a poor church. I'm going to say one thing. I know a heavenly father's got it all. He Amen. said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. He's the, he's the world's mind the, and the fullness thereof. He said, David, I'm telling you one. Well, God spoke to me. God help me. Amen. We got to grow, right? God spoke to me tonight. And, and I see certain individuals this night, and I'm telling you, they got such charisma. Everybody likes them in the community and all that. And I've been a leper ever since I started preaching. Amen. But you know what? God spoke to me. He said, would you rather have the favor of man or God? I said, God, I'll take your favor. <laughs> Amen. I like the preaching spirit. I like the power of God. I like to be able to cry. Oh, God, help us tonight. You know what? There is no greater joy in knowing that you, through Christ, you've made a difference in somebody's life. Through Christ, you were there for them. Through Christ, when they lost a child. Through Christ, my friend, when the wife or husband left them. Through Christ, when they got the end stage, you know, wasn't healed and wasn't in front of friend. Through Christ, when you were there with them to the end. You know what a joy it is, and only a Christian understands that. You know what? You make a difference in somebody else's life. You know what? You do that, you're happy, happy, happy. Amen. You know what he said this night? He said, why should I come down to you and the work? Because if I come down to you, the work ceases. Why should I come down to you? He said, why now should I come down to you for? 
Remember this, you've got to come down to him. Think about this. You're on the wall, he's on the ground. You got that? You're climbing, brother. He's on the ground. Satan wants you down, bless God, where he's at. Hallelujah. That's what he wants. He wants you back down. Then all of a sudden, you know, this, not these things you've whipped, you've paid a price for. Things are going good. You throw the old dart across your mind. Some bad thought across your mind some way, some lust. I'll tell you something, you get out of church, not because of the preacher, not because of nobody else. You get out of church. Let no man say when he's tempted of God, he can, for God cannot be tempted, even he tempted any man. But every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust in a time. Satan draws you off the wall down to the ground. He said, it's not why should the work cease. Let me tell you something, friend. You know what happens? You come down off your cross, and Satan, you'll work a cease. You come back to this. Now, how many people I know of, how many men I know of right now for, for compromise, popularity, for a short season, soul got out, and it cost them. How many men I see this night in the pulpits that soul got out? Oh, they're popular. Everybody likes them. The only problem is not my friend tonight. God's not pleased. They'd rather have the favor of man, the praise of man, than God. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now, friend. There'll be a time, amen, that's not, wouldn't it be awful, my friend, to sit there? And my friend, you know what? You used to be a friend cook some of the best meals ever was this night. And you, my friend, you forgot all the recipes, amen. You forgot all the recipes, amen. You forgot those little things you put into it, amen. Let me go this night. But you know what he said? I'm not coming down. I'm going to go this night to the 32nd chapter of the book of the, uh, I'm not going to uh, wire this out tonight. I'm going to the 32nd chapter of this night. But how many of you in here tonight, God speak in your heart as I preach tonight. They're not a person in this room if you're trying to serve God. You know what Satan says? Hey, man, he, he wants you, man, he wants you to come down. You know why? You're making a difference, friend. And how, I'll say this also. I have to be prepared that they're not a person in this room that can't drop their cross. I cannot sit here and get to a point. And some people, so many people in this room, you don't realize how you encourage me as a pastor. Amen. And old mother, what's an old mother like? These old mothers that cooked, I mean, I mean, they cooked. You one back here. You're, you're, some of you are in here. Oh, what did what, you cook for? You cook because you love the kids, but you love them kids. What would you cook for? And most of the time you'd last one to eat. But what do you cook for? Come they some men just say this, boy, oh, ma'am, all, mom, there are nobody can make biscuits like you, right, El Varley? No one can make biscuits like you. No one can make cornbread like you. No one cook beans like you. And you toiled all day long. That's all you needed, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't that all you need just to hear that bless God? Can I tell you one thing right now? All pastor needs. All he wants his heart's right with God is what you, my friend, get taller and stronger. <laughs> you know, see how I handle that? <laughs> taller and stronger. He don't want you set to need all this now where it just all goes to the midsection. He wants you, my friend, to use it, apply it to your life where you grow taller and stronger in Christ tonight. But what's the joy of when he sees you grow? He sees you coming on. You may not know this, but you know what? God speaks to him and other people in the church. They know when you're going through trouble. You may come here smile on your face, but I know the way Satan works tonight. And all these young people in here right now, he's fighting you to the hilt, is he not? Yes. Is he not, young Christians in here? What's God saying? You've got a purpose. You understand this now? I'm not coming down. Amen. Why don't I want to go back that with, with, with old, old, uh, that, that guy again? Exodus chapter, Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32 in the Word of God. Amen. Genesis chapter 32. I really want to bring out a point here. Remember Jacob and Esau? They were the son of Isaac. They were the grandsons of the great Abraham. You're going to find this night, and they had a little bit of a falling out there. And it was on Esau's end, and God's divine providence. But you're going to find this night, but he sent him on ahead. Because he thought that Esau would kill him. But he knew he had to say and spend some time along with God to prepare himself to humble down before Esau. He wouldn't out of the battle, but he had to prepare for the battle. Well, he did this night, he sent my friend the night to, to shoot him by the two concubines first. Then he said, this my friend, there's not the one uh, tonight. Rachel was the last. Amen. And you're going to find this night, and he sent the other one before that. Amen. But anyway, 
and he sent them on a cross before. So we had to stay there and pray and get a hold of God. And the Bible said this in verse 24, and there are times that you and I are left alone. Amen. Our family are dependent upon us to go forward. Keep that in mind now. There are people you're depending on you, dear, dear, dear people. Well, I'm going to ask you something also right here, and I've got to get in this. I've just got to interject this because of my spirit. But you know what, this night, he said in Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, he said, I, if after you, but he said this right here, have you begun the spirit now you made perfect by the flesh? All of a sudden, God saved you this night. You had nowhere to go, but now you're going to take care of your own self. I'm going to do it my way. This is the key. Right, now listen, this is for lost people also. This is for saved people. He said, if you suffered so many things in vain to bring you this point. Jesus, if you went to the cross up here, your body looks like a garbage grinder. Have you suffered the shame, humiliation, all the things you went through right now? Has it been vain? You know what Jesus said? It ain't been in vain. Amen. It's not been in vain. Can I say something to you, my friend? It takes, a, how many of you know this? It takes a lot of hardship, a lot of trials, a lot of things that bring us down to a point. We'll say, God, I give. Lord, I need a Savior. I need somebody to help me. Has that been in vain? Has that been in vain? Bless God. Amen. That's what he wants, ain't it? Just throw all that away. Everything you learned, what it took you, bring you that point. Amen. Bring you that point. It's like me right now. You know what? Don't you think? Let me ask you something. Only because of the position. There is no one in this room that Satan attacks any more than the pastor in the church. Amen. Understand that. The pastor in the church. That's when he goes after more than anybody else. Because that's the way he set this thing up. Because a pastor is a servant to the church of all. He, my friend, now is the under shepherd for the father. Listen to what he said, though. And Jacob was left alone to wrestle a man with him until the breaking of the day. All night long. Getting ready to turn around, right? And your day is going to come. And when he saw they prevail not against him, let me tell you something. He touched the howl of his thigh and the howl of Jacob's thigh while well, joining his wrestle with him. Remember this now. You know, the cross gets painful at times, don't it? The cross gets painful, don't it? Amen. And you know what? And at the very same like time, it seemed like you're bound the hardest, and Satan will hit you a little bit more harder because he knows. Because God's trying you right now. Before he puts any more, my friend, on you, any more work to do, if you lift you up any more, do his work. Deuteronomy chapter 8, my friend, I think 1 through 4. Down through the area, he said, I suffered you. I allowed you to hunger to make thee know this. Not that man does not live by bread alone, but every word, but proceed out of the mouth of God. He said, you know why I fed you with manna? And I allowed all these things to happen to make thee know. But also this night to make thee know and to try you to see where, what you, were you going to serve me or not. You know what God did? He's going to put you through these things to see, my friend, if you're going to, if you're going to be faithful to him. Everything else in the world. It's not hard, my friend, to stand up and preach to a receptive crowd when everybody's saying amen. But what about, my friend, you've got, and I have to, I've done this in times past, when you've got to preach a sermon, bless God, and everybody in the church don't like it. Can I tell you one thing this night? But still, God's going to say one thing, David, you're going to preach for me or am I going to preach for the popular of the crowd? Amen? I'll ask you one thing. You know what? Are we going to pass the test? Some, some haven't. I'm honest with you. There are people there, my friend, tonight, and very sincere, endure for a while, then Satan throws it at them. You know what, they're not in the, and listen to the sermon, and they forget where they're going back down to. They forget who they're going to. Remember this right now. You've got to come down up here to go back down where they're at. Amen. Not your bare on, but my friend, you're going a different direction. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me tonight. I'll not, I'll not let me, you go, I'm not going now, I'm not going. I'm telling you right now, brother, I fought you all night long. You done touched my thigh, and I've been in pain wrestling you right now. And I'm telling you one thing right now. Have you heard not, I'll use a nice word. Not stubborn, but determined. Determined not is a, is a, a good way of looking at being stubborn. <laughs> You're determined. Have you determined? Amen? I'm determined. I'm not the, okay, I'm so glad you let me go and let you use as an example, Margie. So glad. I want to anyway, but since you volunteered. Amen. And Margie will sit there this night. 
Pete's wrong. There ain't no way I'm telling him I'm sorry. I mean it, God. I'm not telling him that. I've wrestled this all night long this night. I'm not doing it. I'm going to say one thing, whatever it is. Can I say something to you, my friend? If you wrestle all night long, my friend, you know what, not, and you still ain't give up, then all of a sudden you get hit again. And you know what, you may as well say, bless God, I'm seeing this thing through. Amen, I'll tell you right now, I done got a bad leg. I ain't got no sleep all night long. And I'm going to tell you one thing, hallelujah, God. Why not finish it up? I ain't letting go if God put my fingernails in your back. I ain't letting go, God. Woo! Till you bless me, hear me, God. I'm not letting go, God, till you bless me. He said, I just want to see if he's going to quit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Let me how I know this. I'm going to go to two more scripture right now. Go this night. And this boy's been another. I'm just preaching some anchors for me down through the years. Amen. I've been here. I wore mine to wear out packing, leading church different times. But anyway, Acts chapter 20, 23 and 24. They're telling this night, you know, this guy come up, I think maybe an Agabus. Come up there and prophesy this night. So I'm saying, no, don't go here because the Lord doesn't show me whoever had this girdle is going to set you going to bonds and affliction. And Paul said, say that the Holy Ghost witnesses to every city saying that bonds and affliction by me there. This is what he said, though. And this is the guy that's been through the war. Church, there's some of you in here, you've been through the war. But he said, none of these things move me. They didn't move me. I'm a young Christian. Hold this old gray-headed preacher now I'm preaching. I forgot his name now, over Harlan, Kentucky. Amen. Harley Hensley, I believe it was. Anyway, gray-headed, my friend, all this and different things. And he's seen this night. My friend literally saw seven tumors come out of his body when he was running the call to preach. He said, I saw my old mama. I was in the church down this night. And monkey see, monkey do, right? Get the music going. They stand up this night and then sit back and gossip about five minutes. I thought, I know better than that. But anyway... He said, I remember this. He got never said, they're very cool and calm. He said, you know, I remember years ago, we didn't have to have all this. Remember that? How many remember people you shout the preaching? How many people just glad to be at the house of God? How many remember just got there, bless God? They just shouting before they got there. Hey, Amen. I'm going to use you back here, Mom. Okay? Had a good talk with her. She's here tonight, and I'm going to get her permission. I was sitting there talking with her today, and I'm, I'm going to get this. She sat there, and I said, you remember a time, man, you loved to go to church? Boy, that sprung a bell with this mom back here. And she said, yeah. And I sat there and I thought, I don't remember that one. I was going to use it, but she's here. She gave me permission anyway. But she said, you know what? You lived up here, Rock Creek, Bridge 11 up here in that area. I know exactly where she lived up. I went to school with her brother and all these things. And she said, yeah. She said, we used to sit here tonight and go to church up Hickory Knob. I thought, there ain't no road from Rock Creek up Hickory Knob unless you go a long way around. She said, yeah, we went up there at Ball Knob. I thought, Ball Knob? How many know where Ball Knob's at? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many know where Hickory Knob's at? Yeah. Okay. How many know the road up the holler to get there? Do you? You walked it lately, Mike? Why? I did when I was working. Okay. <laughs> you got paid for that. <laughs> that don't count. <laughs> but what I'm saying, you know what she said? Your mom was blind. She said, I'd take Mama and lead her up through there. She said, watch for the snakes, go across the creek, walk up that big old steep hill, set up there. That's a long walk, wasn't it? I mean, a long walk from down there at mine 11. Now, that's a long walk now. All the way up there tonight. Then we go ball knob, all the way up there, right? She said, don't want this night, and I'd lead Mom tonight. But she said, you know what? I said, we'd happy. I said, I guess you had a cool old life tonight, didn't you come back with? She said, yeah. She had a cool old night tonight, come back. Here she led her mom. You know what she said was? But said, boy, we enjoyed it. We was happy. You know, I'm going to say one thing. Bless God. That path's still there. It, oh, God, help us. Can I say something to you right now, dear God in heaven? If you know that, you've come to that. Bless God this night. Hey, man, let me tell you something. I'm going this right here. But you know what, my friend, tonight? I've got to go back now and then. But you know what? There are people, my friend, he know he had. My friend, he couldn't give up. He knowed up front. Bless God, there's people waiting in his leadership. He, my friend, they know the people are waiting in him. Hey, Paul, hey, man, you know what he knew? Jacob knew mom's up there. Them, my friend, his wives, they knew all of his children up there. And they're depending him get there to lead them the way, friend. The face Esau. Can I say something to you right now? And you're going through your valley, bless God. Hey, man, you, you're praying and you're wrestling this thing out. They're waiting for you up there, friend. Your children are waiting on you, young, you young mothers in here. Hey, man, I'm telling you, they're waiting on you, bless God, for direction, my friend, for leadership right now, because they trust you, my friend. And you know what, my friend, God position you, my friend, for that. Say amen to the word. Amen. Glory to God. 
Makes me happy, happy, happy. Now let's go. But Paul said, there's not none of these things move me. Neither. He said, there's not, you know, count my life dear to myself. It's something you want. I'm going to finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I may testify of the gospel, the grace of God. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I mentioned this over the funeral there Friday. Hey, man, that man could praise God, agonize in pain, give up, didn't have long to live, all this pain. So I want to tell everybody how great my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was. I'm going to tell you one thing, bless God. You put yourself a bunch of, my friend, a bunch of church people around now this night. Uh, you can't, you're God in heaven. It's just bad. When's the last time, my friend, you... <laughs> When's the last time you couldn't shut your mouth? My <coughs> you want to tell somebody tonight? <laughs> I thought, dear God, <laughs> if, you, if you want to see where somebody's spiritual out about, I'll tell you what you do. You, you just being there and far for God, start telling all about the goodness of God. They'll start looking their watch. They'll start getting around this, not looking around. they got to get away from you. You know why this night? All of a sudden realize this night, my friend, their hands is cold. My friend's a fish hook. My friend trying to my friend get a bass out. My friend in the middle of April in the, in the river. Amen. Amen. Ain't that right? <laughs> Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Yeah, right. But you know what he said tonight? <laughs> Amen. But I'm going to go also a bit. said, I'm not shunning clearly. I'm closing out. But in 23 right now, verse 13, he's going to go back to Ephesus. And you know, they tell him not to go, man, not to go. And you know, there ain't nothing but trouble out there. You know, if you go down and preach, there ain't nothing but trouble. You know, if you keep preaching what you do, it's going to make a bunch of people mad. I'm going to tell you one thing for this night. I'm honest with you. I never preach a sermon that God gave me the devil didn't get mad about. You've never done one frame for God that God didn't get mad about. I'm going to say something. You better come to a conclusion right now. No matter what you do, bless God, you're going to make him mad if you serve God. So best thing, my friend, just get with it, man, except that that's the way it is. He's the devil. You're a child of God. That's the way it's going to be, friend. The only problem is now he used people not you think should have support you, but still the devil put that in your head. Amen. Amen. Closing out. He said, why do you sit here and break my heart and do all this big to do? He said, I'm just not ready to be bound, Jerusalem. He said, I'm ready to die, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. This is the reward. How many times do you think the devil told Paul to drop his cross? I mean, you know, it really blesses me. I see some of you in here that's, I've seen some of you in here that's up in years and been saved a long time. You've elevated your game. There's some that's not, you know what, you're You're faithful. You're faithful. And I don't, I don't want to encourage you, but you're faithful. You're going to be here. It may not always be John the spot, but you're going to be here. There are people coming this night, you're sick. He encourages me. I want to encourage you. Amen. I want to encourage you. You know, and I try to do everything here through the name of the church for the Lord. Amen. That, that's who it's all about. But you know what Paul said? He said, I'm now ready to be offered. I'm never going to be offered in the time my departure is at hand. But what was his mindset? He said, I fought a good fight. This is what he said. I finished my course. I'm going to show you something about saying there because it's sitting next. Better get back to that. But what he did was what? I believe Paul in that jail cell through the grace of God, I believe he's high fighting. I believe him and Jesus is just having the time. I believe, bless God, he done went what he's been through. Only thing I got left tonight is that I'm not the guillotine out there. And history says, oh, Paul ran to it. Yeah. You know, he said, nice, I'm ready, brother. I mean, through all them years he'd been through, he was ready. He said, I'm telling you right now, the only thing separate me from glory is that chop block. Amen tonight. And you say, why? I'm telling you something, God's real. And I'm going to tell you something, God can give you grace. Yes. God can give you grace. He'll give you grace. But you know what he said this night? And I kept the faith. You know what Paul said tonight? But by the way, I don't know exactly when it is. Hey Amen. Well, everybody's left me. <laughs> Demas has forsaken him. Went to Thessalonica. He loved the present world. Only Luke was with him. Luke was the only one, the beloved physician. He said, just bring old John Mark with you. By the way, bring the parchments. I got some more sermons to preach. <laughs> I got some more sermons to preach tonight. And bring the cloak, by the way, it's getting a little cold in this jail cell, if you don't care. I don't believe he got the parchments. I don't believe he got the cloak. And I don't believe there's some sermons he ever got to preach. But I'll tell you one thing, when he's studying about, bless God, God, I believe he's having the time in that jail cell. Amen. Like every head to bow, if you would, please. <laughs>